uh, today's society, it's all about, uh, you know, s discrimination. Discriminating against people that don't believe the way you do or they don't look the way you do. You know, we're living in really interesting times and part of it is that none of the rules that I would say people like me grew up believing, everything is up for grabs, things have been thrown out. And so, uh, you know, in my day, my young adulthood and even, you know, uh, my middle age, uh, there were certain things we believed about non-discrimination. It was wrong to discriminate against anyone because of their race, uh, because of their gender, their religion, uh, uh, and uh, even sexual orientation. You know, people like me may be conservative when it comes to uh, family and, and our beliefs because of our religion, I've, I've never condoned, you know, discrimination against someone, you know, because of their sexual preference. In fact, a uh, part of my uh, life story is that I went to a party once as the date of a gay guy, and you know, we were the coolest couple there. We were the best looking couple. I can't dance very well, but it was about how good we looked and not so much about we were not great dancers. <laughs> but. Um, and when I look at uh, today's society, it's all about, uh, you know, s discrimination. Discriminating against people that don't believe the way you do, or they don't look the way you do. And when I was a child, I grew up in poverty, so uh, I was shamed and bullied a lot. I was shamed because of my clothes. I was shamed because of my hair. Uh, back in those days, if you were more middle class as a black person, you went to a hairdresser and you got your hair straightened and you had cute little curls. Uh, I had plaits, and that was not cool. I mean, that was almost like a mark of social class. And uh, during the time I was growing up, uh, if you were middle class and you did pack your lunch, you would have uh, sliced bread, uh, store-bought bread, I had biscuits, and so you were teased if you had biscuits, and so I would never eat my lunch at school. I would eat it before school or after school. I didn't want to be shamed and bullied. Now it's okay to shame and bully people because they don't think the way you do. They don't look the way you do. Uh, that seems to be acceptable uh, to do, you know, to white children, to send their children home crying about things that their ancestors allegedly did. What I find so troubling about the way race is being taught today in America is that if you told the true story, you know, it would be bad enough just to tell the truth, but the true story of American history is a story of people coming together, working uh, together across racial and ethnic lines, and there were always abolitionists, and these were white people that were fighting hard against slavery, and the Underground Railroad the people that used their homes and transported slaves were risking their lives every day. We're not giving them any credit. We're saying that all white people are racist. What about those white people that taught in the black schools, the philanthropists that set up the historically black colleges and universities? Those places didn't set themselves up. If we were to tell America's true story, we'd have to talk about Booker T. Washington and the Tuskegee Institute. We'd have to talk about uh, Phyllis Wheatley. We'd have to talk about, uh, I mean, just the fact that she was a brilliant poet uh, and that black people produce brilliant poets coming out, out of slavery. It produced artists. It produced successful businessmen. It produced the people that eventually set up Black Wall Street. Uh, those people didn't get government loans. There was no affirmative action around. They did it themselves. Tell the true story of America. And if you tell the true story, we have a lot to celebrate. And so CRT doesn't tell the true story of America. It's about dividing people. It is destructive and we should all fight against it. You know, what's taking place uh, at this moment in the discussion is the argument that CRT is not being taught in public schools. 
and of course it's being taught in public schools and uh, children are going home reporting to their parents what they're experiencing. And I'm aware of one school where a teacher actually showed a group of children of the George Floyd video of his death and then she asked the white children to raise their hands if they felt guilty because of being white. And there are children that are coming home telling their parents that all the lessons and all the teachers, uh, they're focusing on race and privilege. And in many cases, you know, these are children that have had uh, classmates and friends of different races, and they just, they were friends. You know, you know they knew uh, these people as individuals, and all of a sudden, in the classroom, there are teachers, they're following uh, curricular that comes from the Department of, of uh, School Boards and um, the Department of Education that's very much focused on helping them to be conscious of race. They believe that by making children conscious of race, that's the way you would eradicate ra racism. It actually does the opposite. And, and, and also, uh, you think about it, uh, it's CRT because part of CRT makes the argument that white people, that they're all born with privilege. And so in the classroom, when you're presenting uh, the, the narrative, the teacher is not going to call it, hey, today we're going to talk about critical race theory. No, they're going to present the ideas, uh, but they want all white kids to believe that they're privileged just because they have white skin. And all minorities, no matter how affluent and where they go for their vacations uh, and uh, where they live, that they're victims. And you know, there are wealthy uh, black people in America that are multimillionaires, that are billionaires. And uh, the very first uh, black millionaire, uh, female millionaire in America was a black woman. CRT being taught in the classroom, it just diminishes uh, the, everyone. It's demoralizing to whites and blacks. And yes, it's in the classroom. It doesn't call itself CRT, but uh, through the books that they read, that Ibram Kendi's book, Stamped, uh, there are teachers that are requiring all the students to read uh, his books about racism. Uh, and there's no way you can read that book as a white person and not feel victimized because you're targeted, you're racist, and as a minority, I think you'd go through a range of emotions being exposed to uh, that reasoning. Uh, but that is taking place in our classrooms and it's not uh, helping our children. And if you think about a post pandemic or you know everything that took place uh, since coronavirus, our children, because of the lockdowns, they are already months, and in some cases, almost a year or two behind, especially if they're in the inner city. These children don't need to be focused on social justice and, you know, who's a racist and who isn't. They need uh, to learn, you know, the basic skills for academic success. When you are pushing that social justice agenda, you're not teaching uh, hardcore academics. And that's a detriment uh, to our society and to our children. And as a consequence of America being focused so much on the social justice and the racism, we're falling behind children in other nations where they're not doing that. If you want to know more about critical race theory, it has consumed my life for the last couple of years. But last summer, uh, 2021, I uh, published a co-authored book. I'm going to hold it up. Black Eye for America, How Critical Race Theory is Burning Down the House. It explains what critical race theory is, where it came from, how it manifests itself in our society, why it's anti-Christian, anti-civil rights, anti-constitution, and it also has um, two chapters on how to fight back against it. And you will want to fight back against it, regardless of your race or ethnicity, CRT is destructive, it's divisive, it will not bring about racial reconciliation, it's demeaning to minorities as well as whites, it is not a positive for our society. And I'm working on another book uh, to answer that question, is CRT being taught in the classroom? Yes, it is. And so my next book will be even thinner, but it will be uh, st uh, stocked 
packed and full of examples of CRT being taught in the classroom. So you have your charge, you have your mission, go out there and get it done.